I'm Elle, and welcome to the Elevation Grant Project Reveal. So Elevation Grant is all about giving creatives of color the opportunity to take a risk in the outdoors. So I thank Marmot and our host of kind sponsors to help me make this happen. So with that, I wanna introduce one of the incredible recipients, Jay Begay, who's of the Dene and Tasuki Pueblo. She is an indigenous rights and climate policy expert, organizer, and filmmaker. All right, Jade, welcome. Thanks, Al. <laughs> Tell me a little bit more. You got to give the audience a little bit more about who you are. Yeah, well, that was a great intro. Um, I'll just share that I come from my, um, well, I'm calling in right now from my ancestral homelands here in um, Ogapooge, which is also known as Santa Fe, New Mexico. And yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. I, I um, really work at the nexus of climate justice, environmental justice, and storytelling mm -hmm. um, with, yeah, with an emphasis on um, uplifting indigenous rights and indigenous leadership um, in the act of all of that. <laughs> Amazing. So what was a little bit, what was your project about? Yeah, so a high level overview of the project. Um, we'll get into it more. Um, this project is about the Athabascan people, um, which I will continue to refer to as the Natine, which, you know, is a term that Indigenous peoples um, who, who are Athabascan use, that's the word we use. Um, that's our word for, you know, this, this lineage, this cultural identity. Um, and so the, the film, which is very much in development, um, is going to explore the language and cultural connections um, across the Athabascan or not Dine um, migration. So there are Athabascan peoples all the way up in Alaska, all the way down, you know, California, and then down here into the Southwest. Um, some known Athabascan tribes are well known um, Athabascan tribes in. Uh, the Southwest or the Dene, like myself, or the Apache, and um, the lineage goes even into Northern Mexico. Um, so this is a really uh, interesting, mysterious uh, migration story. And my hope is that this, that the learnings from, you know, how we kept our culture intact, how we kept language intact, can be a a roadmap, so to speak, for the future and current migration that Indigenous peoples are experiencing and going to experience more with the climate crisis. One of the things that struck us about Jade when we were interviewing and going through the host of people who were applying was Jade's proposal. I think from a team of, as we were going through it, it just the project really stood out. It was very different. As Jade is someone who's a filmmaker, it was about migration and integrates adventure. And it like just harks back to so many things that seem interconnected that we thought was really beautiful. And so I'm so curious about your path and how you got into wanting to tell these types of stories. So, um... I grew up with artists. Both my parents are artists in wow. um, metal arts and sculpture and pottery. And my mom is also a museum cu curator at different points in her life. Um, and so I grew up with, um, yeah, really incredible exposure to native and indigenous um, arts and culture from a young age. Um, and then, you know, I, I also grew up uh, very traditional in my community, um, meaning that I, I grew up uh, in, in very close proximity to my language, my culture, and our, our way of life, our ceremonies. Um, and over the course of 
even just my adolescence into young adulthood, I started to acknowledge the changes in my homelands. Um, for instance, we have a, we had a river run through our community where we would go to that water for our ceremonies. And um, mm -hmm. today that river no longer runs. Um, wow. And so these, these um, you know, kind of flags of seeing the changes in our environment, um, and then also just being hyper aware of, you know, radical native messages and um, and the things that were going on in in native or Indian country um, with with culture and narrative, um, that really gave me a boost um, to work at this nexus of film and, and narrative shift and culture shift and and then also um yeah going into you know the advocacy part the part that you know lands our rights and our our fights into into policy and law let's get to your project what was the inspiration i know this is not finished this is part of something that's ongoing for you. And I'm just curious to learn more and understand this topic that's been developing. Yeah, so the inspiration comes really from a childhood curiosity that was sparked because um, I was from a young age told stories by my grandpa that we were related to people in the North. Um, in Northern Territories uh, like um, Fort Chippewa, Canada, uh, or so-called Canada, and um, Alaska. And I've always just wanted to know more. And, you know, in my, in my work um, as a climate justice organizer, um, I've, I've been to all these places, uh, you know, to build with community, to advocate with them and to work with them and to build solutions together. And when I go to these places, um, they would, they would also, you know, chime in with their stories and say, well, you're my, you're my cousin. And, you know, they would um, share with me uh, words from their Athabascan language that sounded just like my some of the words in my Athabascan language, which is Diné. And so, you know, as, as through my life, I've just heard about these connections. They've, there's been a lot of oral storytelling and I've tried to go to look for more. And I, I've come up against, um, I guess, a wall in, in some cases. And, mm. um, and also when I've tried to look for literature, you know, I've noticed that a lot of that literature is by um, white anthropologists. So um, really the inspiration is to tell the story of the Natana, the Athabascan peoples from the Athabascan peoples. I think that's incredibly powerful and incredibly needed. I think so often we're not the ones who get to tell our own stories and our own narratives. And so I'm stoked to see um, how your project is coming together and, and to, to see more. And so without further ado, would you like to introduce your, your short or the, your trailer? Yes, absolutely. So. Um, this is a, a, a very short trailer. Um, it's a, actually a trailer of a trailer. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's just a small glimpse into um, some of the, the concept and some of the places that um, I was able to go to to begin developing this story. As climate change continues to reshape our communities and landscapes pray we listen well to the changes in the wind, the story of the Not Diné or Athabascan migration is a history lesson for our future. So I am here to listen to the stories of a people who know how to migrate and flex and bend with the wind to the travelogues of history that reveal both where we have come from and how we will get to where we're going. This journey is about listening to the stories 
of Natana as prophecy. Okay, oh, it's incredible to see your trailer and see where you're going with this project. Um, one of the things that we notice, I notice when looking at it, it's so much about the place rather than the people. I'm mm -hmm. curious, can you take us how you got um, around to choosing, what was your choosing, what was your process for choosing the destinations and the relationship between those places? Yeah, so the, the footage in that trailer um, is mostly from uh, two regions, uh, the Southwest where I am based and where I'm from and uh, Alaska. Um, and then specifically, cause Alaska is huge, um, EAC territory down in Southeast Alaska and lower Tanana territory, which is around so-called Fairbanks. Um, and really, you know, I, it was less about choosing those places and going to the places where I already had relationship, I already had built trust with community to, um, yeah, to really, you know, work with those folks who I had relationship with to tell, to begin telling this, more of this story about the Nadana about Athabascan people. Um, and, and so, and then, you know, just kind of the, the process of other destinations or other places um, that we will continue to go to are totally dependent on, on that migration. Um, you know, we're following a very specific migration pattern. And so, um, eventually we'll hopefully stop in, um, you know, these core or, um, yeah, important areas where Athabascan peoples have settled, um, along the, their migration pattern. Um, so, um, you know, in the last few months, uh, we've been able to go to, we've been able to spend, I've been able to spend uh, a, a really good amount of time in both of these specific regions, but the, the idea is to get, you know, again, to those, um, those important spots where Athabascan peoples are. Yeah, I think going from there, I think one of the things that people are probably wondering is for the trailer, um, why the focus on the land versus interviewing people? I'm just curious if you can just speak a little bit why that it was so important to, to show place. Well, um, you know, to be really transparent, um, the stories with people are very much still coming together. Um, I'll, I'll just share that a lot of these stories um, around migration, um, around you know our people, where we come from, they can only be told in the winter. Um, and so we had a good amount of time this past winter to get into in a, into a, a few um, interviews, but we we need more, and um, we have to wait till next winter to get into more interviews. Um, and this is a cultural. Thing. So, you know, uh, I'm, I'm respecting the culture of our peoples and of various communities um, and, their, and their cycle of telling story. Um, so, yeah, the, the focus of place and land in this trailer um, is, is to show where we're going, um, where we've been, and like the expanse of, of this migration. Um, it's, it's even hard to share in just 30 seconds, so, or a minute, however long it is. So, you know, we're gonna get into that more. Um, you know, the longer piece will definitely be more interactive with visuals of maps and graphics showing just like how big this migration is. Um, but hopefully, you know, showing these, these places and the land um, gives people the sense of, of the expanse and the vastness of, 
of this um, Athabascan migration, this non-Dene migration. Um, amazing. And so I think that's really interesting. And just so people know that um, this grant just is helping you, it's part of a bigger picture. And so, and that this is something that you're going to continue to work on. And it's really interesting. That's something I truly did not know about being able to tell story in the winter. Um, just for out of just curiosity, is that because is that the time when people feel the most settled because they're not able, they don't have to do so much to prepare for winter. And so they're just, is there like, does that have to do with it? Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good guess. Um, and, and you're right. Yeah. So, you know, in many indigenous cultures, uh, we're really busy and active. Summertime is like a ceremonial time and, um, and then fall is all about the harvest. And so winter is really a time to rest and reflect and share lessons. Um, and so, uh, naturally, um, in lots of cultures, not all, um, winter is, is the time to share story. This has been an interesting grant period. All different things are happening in the world and to us personally and like creatively. I was curious, um, with this, doing this project, what were some of the, your challenges or the hurdles? Yeah, yeah. So I think just for any film project where you're going into rural indigenous communities, um, you're faced with the challenge of the pandemic. And so, yeah, of course, there were delays and setbacks. And um, I even, you know, had to cancel one of my trips to Alaska in December. Uh, because the booster like had a really intense impact on me. So yeah, all this unforeseen stuff that comes just from like our circumstances right now. Um, and I, and I think, you know, we're, yeah, we're all just rolling with the punches and I'm, I'm so grateful to, um, yeah, the, the grant and you all, the team I've been working with just for the adaptability, the flexibility, I think we've all gained that muscle over the last two or however many years. Um, but I think more, you know, regarding the narrative, the story, this is a deep, deep, deep story. Um, this migration, you know, goes back thousands and thousands of years. And there's even some tension around, um, around the migration itself, you know, um, my people, Dene people in the Southwest, we have a really incredible creation story that means a lot to us. And so, and it, and it talks about how we came up from this place that we're very much rooted in this place right here. And, you know, within these four sacred mountains that I'm currently within. And so to talk about this migration in kind of more scientific terms even kind of rubs up against you know some of our creation stories that were mm -hmm. really um that we really identify with so um with with the more traditional more um kind of ceremonial folks that I've been able to meet and talk with you know there's there's a little bit of well it's a lot of trust building it's a lot of trust building to get to that point of like okay yes we have our creation stories and something happened something happened where our people went up or they came down or something so let's talk about that and um and it just yeah it it it's a process of trust building it's a process of relationship building and I'm happy to do it. I'm like here for that. Um, but it, it is a challenge and it just takes time. I think that's really um, important and interesting to take a moment and talk about. I think um, as creatives, I think some people see the end result. They didn't realize how long it even took just to get to the production. Uh, sometimes it just takes a lot of trust just to get there. Um, and you see like this amazing thing that could, you know, could be someone's life's work or uh, generations of work 
um, to even have that. And so thank you for um, illuminating that. And so. Oh yeah. I mean, this project could easily be like a PhD dissertation. <laughs> um, and so, you know, just acknowledging that and giving myself that grace and also allowing myself to not rush it. Um, you know, I think for so many uh, reasons in this world, in this society, we want to see an end result. We want to see, you know, the, the content move through the festivals and have that moment, but I'm really leaning into um, the story is deep and it deserves time. Uh, I think that's fantastic. And um, hopefully this grant has been able to, to help with that process. And one of the things I'm so curious because we knew so many, we had so many applicants. And so there was so many interesting, interesting things how people applied. But one of those things is like, you know, when you get a pool of money or things change, the world is changing. Like um, sometimes you may not be able to do all that you're wanting to do. Sometimes you realize that there, you can only do this much. And so one of those things I'd be curious to talk about is how your project kind of evolved during the period. Um, if you're if you're open to sharing. Yeah, of course. Um, so I think um, one thing that is happening like in real time in this moment as I reflect, um, and I think this happens for a lot of us in the era of um, uh, AC after COVID um, is that we our memories are a little wonky. So I'm even in just trying to remember, you know, what my first proposal was. I'm I'm struggling here a little bit, but um, I know that I totally underestimated the 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 depth of this story. Um, not out of you know wanting to make something fast and short and digestible, but um, I, I just hadn't started. And so I just didn't know, you know, like all the pathways that one person will lead you to and one place will take you, you know, you, you start a journey and that it just, there's networks that are created from, you know, one intention. And so um, I've been led down lots of pathways now and um, I, I think I, I think I had originally pitched a, a, a short doc, like in the maybe like 20, 30 minute realm. And now even doing a feature feels a little confining to, again, mm -hmm. the vastness of this story. Um, because when you get into the Athabascan culture, there's like, there's cosmology, there's language, there's um, creation stories, how those all like are related, um, food even. And so, um, you know, at this point I'm, I'm talking with community and, and advisors around what it looks like to create a series. Um, so yeah, I, I think that might be the way. And, um, it, like I said, it's, it's a journey, but, um, we're, we're in the process and we're figuring it out. <laughs> That's so interesting. And I think that gets to something. I think sometimes as creative, um, you kind of really touched on it that like you didn't, you knew the depth of the project, but until you kind of really, really get in there, it's way more vast than you can, than sometimes we can conceptualize. Did that ever make you nervous that you're feeling like you really may not be able or like not that you may not be able? Did that ever make you nervous that like that that death and breath of it? Did it make you nervous to kind of take that on or feel as though you can take that on? Well, I mean, I'm not taking this on alone. Um, <laughs> and so I guess like, yes, there was a moment where I was like, oh, man, like there is so much here. And we are going to have to build um, so many different 
relationships to really share, you know, the full, um, the full story and also acknowledging that um, film is not the only medium that um, this story is going to exist in or live through, um, you know, even it, I mentioned this earlier, but there's, um, you know, there's a lack of Native Indigenous led written content on this. There's a lack of audio content on this topic, this story. So how can we even, you know, once we get through the film portion and we're able to create, you know, these, um, the series or this episodic journey, you know, what does it then look like to create audio archives from interviews so that Indigenous folks um, can access those and it's how can we make that open source because um, those are archives that are really important to who we are and learning more about our identity. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's way more than just a story. It's like we're, we're talking about um, a migration that led to people existing in other places in the world. And so this is very important information for our, our yeah, who, who we are, where we come from. Um, and so from like an um, ethnographic kind of perspective, realizing the importance of these pieces and this material. I think that's really, um, thank you for sharing that. And then I think the only thing I, um, if you could touch on a little bit is, um, uh, I think so much, there's a lot of erasure in how we move and how that can relate to adventure or sport. And I think in your proposal, that was also you, kind of like really beautifully interweave that and like is that going to be a part of the next chapter or um, or part of what we see about I think there's I don't know I think there's just a lot of erasure in how people move and how and how indigenous people are kind of the athletes of our of, of the time and so um, if you if there's anything you'd like to share yeah, well, you know, there's definitely, um, I mean, you know, we, to explore some of these lands, um, you know, I was on, I was on, and to access certain places to get footage, you know, we, I was on skis um, and I was, yeah, absolutely, you know, on an adventure trekking through um, places in Alaska and here in my homelands. Um, and so uh, that was present. That was just a, a, like the, the means of, and I think that's true for so many, um, so many adventure storytellers is that, you know, it lucky for, luckily for us, we get to, yeah, use our sport or use our um, our adventure modality, whether that be skiing or mm -hmm. hiking or biking, um, to get to the place to that is a part of the story, and that was certainly true for me. Ah, amazing, um, <laughs> Keely! You could totally cut my long intro to that, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but okay, okay. So as part of how you were getting to places and you mentioned skiing and just being able to go to these lands with, at different seasons, I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about um, all how you were able to use some of the things from our generous sponsors, from Marmot to Sony to Spartwool, and like how did that gear Sony, um, how did that gear play a part or a role in the project? Yeah, well, I mean, it played a very important role, uh, especially the cameras <laughs> from Sony. Um, can't have the footage without the cameras. Um, so that was uh, really fun. And um, I've, I've worked with Sony before, so it was just really exciting to take um, my kit to like the next level and have 
um, really new exciting lenses and um, camera bodies to work with. And then, uh, yeah, you know, like I said, we were, um, I say we, and I, yeah, sometimes I was traveling solo. Sometimes, you know, I just had, yeah, had some extra help, but um, yeah, sometimes we were skiing, like I mentioned in the, in the winter, obviously. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, ski gear, warm jackets, like all of that came into play. And especially when I was in the, um, in, in the North in Alaska, um, in December or no, not December. Right. It was changed to February, um, in February where it was like negative 20 at one point. So, um, that, uh, the marmot, winter gear and the smart wool layers, like all of that was just like came in clutch. Um, and then, yeah, it was great to be on the road in the Southwest driving uh, from driving across Navajo Nation rather and um, and using the Coleman stuff to, you know, keep snacks on the road and camp out and yeah, make sure that I was nourished um, throughout, throughout those shoots. Jade, we're going to wrap up here. And so we're just going to start to wrap up. Thank you so much for illuminating what you've been doing. And I think one other, one other big thing you can illuminate is what advice would you give to other aspiring um, BIPOC creatives of color that are looking to pursue a career in outdoor film? Yeah, um, I mean, it's 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 hard to say just kind of blanket statements. So mm -hmm. I think one thing I can just say and offer is just, you know, finding community to um, navigate this space. You know, there's some really great efforts like this one to, um, to bring more inclusivity or to decolonize, you know, the outdoor space. Um, but there's, you know, there's a long way to go. And um, I think finding peers who you can bounce questions off of, who are navigating challenges um, uh, or who may have navigated challenges that you're experiencing or might experience, um, it, I've, I've just found it really helpful to have that peer support. Um, and yeah, even negotiating budgets or negotiating, you know, um, how content is used and especially like this type of content where it's so important to community. It's so important to mm -hmm. cultural identity. It's really important to have clear, um, you know, clear, uh, boundaries and clear expectations around how that content is used. And so, um, yeah, just in protecting yourself and protecting your community and your values, um, it's, it's really good to have peers and mentors. Fantastic. And thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm, for me, I just want to tell everyone that their point of view and where their story is worthwhile. Don't let anyone ever think that your story and that you can't tell a story that you're close to. Like, even if you may not have all the gear in the world, you may not need it. You may not need it to, sometimes people can have the most gear and tell the worst stories. And so never be afraid to get started and know that you have a place in this industry and that, you know, your work should be illuminated. And so, um, and so thank you so much Jade for telling about your project and about your story and as a final question I'm just so curious what's next in your journey yeah so we're just going to keep building keep developing we have this mini trailer we're going to launch a um, a bigger trailer soon with more um, highlights around the community. You know, this was very, uh, like you mentioned, land-based, but we're going to start revealing um, some of the, the communities we've been with. And 
Um, and then, yeah, just growing, you know, I, you had mentioned, or I had mentioned at one point that um, I use the grant to really help me in the development process, knowing that this would be, you know, a bigger project in the end, no matter what. And so i um, happy to report that we've already had some um, more funding come in. So yeah, just looking to grow. Um, I, I can't do this alone. I need more support. And so, um, yeah, hoping to build a really solid team around this and, um, and yeah, just, just stick, stick to it. Keep, keep moving and building relationships and building trust with communities so we can gather stories. Thank you, Jade. Thanks to your sponsors. Is there anything else you want to say um, as we, as we close out? Yeah, I think I feel good. I just also want to express deep gratitude um, to you, Elle, and the sponsors and Marmot and yeah, everyone who's been a part of this, this journey, this grant process. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Ahyahet. All right. This is the Elevation Grant Reveal. Thank you so much, Jay, for your time. Thanks to all the applicants who've applied. And most importantly, thanks to everyone who supported and contributed. I hope um, this is the start of many. And I'm just so proud that Jade got the opportunity to, to be a recipient. And I look forward to seeing more. Thank you.